games are very complex things. There's a lot of different moving parts. There's things like art, there's code, there's your marketing approach and things like that. We know that. But generally, all of those things have like their own little special tool for it as well. And it's something that you guys seem to like, like these tool videos, they generally perform pretty decently on YouTube. So I figured, hey, it's been a while since we've done one of these. So I wanna talk a bit more about every single tool that we use here at Bite Me Games. And I'm not just gonna give you the boring ones such as Unity, they'll also be there. But I think there are some other ones as well that you probably aren't using or you're not fully aware of of the potential so stick around for those most of these are going to be free because we're kind of broke boys around here but we also have some like more paid ones we made a video last year talking purely about some free assets for game development this is just what we actually use because remember there's always a trade-off if you take free software it's not always going to be as good as a paid version and i've categorized this in three main categories one is for what i call the hard game development tools so this is things like your unity for example that is very technical and you need to have for game development. Then I have a second little category just for the YouTube stuff. YouTube is important as well. And then I also have some stuff for general studio management because that is something that we like to talk about here as well. Not just making games, but actually managing that studio. Now, in terms of those hard game dev tools, very easy. We're a Unity shop. We're not going to be changing anytime soon. Unity, we've talked about it a lot. It's still a really good engine for us. One, we know how to use it. That is very important. If we had to learn a new engine from scratch, we would lose a lot of time that we simply can't afford right now. Also, yeah, Unity has some weird takes recently, but the engine and the technology it's provided is still really solid. Now, Unity, we program it in C Sharp and we don't use Visual Studio here, but instead we use Rider. Now, this is one of the only real premium and kind of expensive tools that we use, but for us, it's really worth it. We're actually planning a dedicated video about Rider as well, why we think it's worth it, but some of the quick advantages is pretty solid integration with Rider, such as being able to see inspector variables in your code. Also things like pause points, so your Unity doesn't just explode basically the moment that you do debugging. And and these things, they're very Unity specific. So if you're using Godot, you wouldn't be using Rider. But if you use a tool this much, it can be worth looking a bit more into, is this actually going to be making my life easier? And for us, for Rider versus Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, it definitely does make our life easier. So that's why we use it. Now we have all of those lines of code. How do we manage it? There are two main version control systems. There's either, you know, things like Perforce or what we use, Git. We've made videos about using Git with Unity as well before. Git is completely free. Even if you want to use like files hosted somewhere else, such for example, on a GitHub, as long as you don't go too crazy in terms of file size, it's going to be completely free. You can work collaboratively. You can go back in time. You can really do branching and everything like that. Pretty easy. And once again, because it costs literally nothing if you want to, you should use it. Even if you're using only your local machine, I think Git is still really good in terms of branching. It's not that hard to get into. There are visual tools for it as well that you can get for free. So even if you're maybe like more of an artist or you have no clue how command lines work and they scare you because they scare me, don't worry about that, then you can still use Git without issue. If you're one of those people who just puts all of your files on a Google Drive, I am very disappointed in you. Don't do that. I don't recommend it at all. So those are the main code tools out of the way. Then we get to, okay, more of our visuals. And the first one here is Blender. We've dabbled around with both 2D and 3D games at this point. 3D is more of our cup of tea and we really like Blender here because once again, it's free. It's actually like, we have real artists now in our team as well. And some of their statements is, it's better than Maya and Maya is paid software. So we like Blender, it's, there's a lot of tutorials there. It's very beginner friendly. Like I could get started with it, Forge Industry, most of the art there is made in Blender by a guy who has no experience really. Sure, you can see that it's made by a guy who has no experience, but imagine actually putting in a bit of effort learning Blender. You can go very far already with very limited input. And once again, it's free. So honestly, I don't think there's much of a reason, especially if you're beginning to go with anything else than Blender. That's a pretty like cold take. Next, if you go more for a 2D pixel art style, such as what we tried with Songs of Everdate or like previous game that we kind of canceled, we used a sprite there. I had once again, never touched pixel art really before. I knew it was a thing, but I'd never experimented with it. A sprite is pretty much the industry standard and I can see why. It's really powerful software. It's really cheap if you want to buy the paid version with like updates that are easy 
or you can actually be like me, be a cheapskate and get it for free. You just have to compile it yourself. So if you have like a little bit of command line experience and you can follow a tutorial, you can get a sprite completely free and it is the standard. Everyone uses it. A sprite is really good in terms of layering, in terms of different kinds of pixel art specific tools. So honestly, Maybe I'm completely off base here, but I don't really see many reasons to use some of the other like online tools like Piscal and whatever. They work, but I feel like they don't work as good as Ace Pride. That's my general thoughts about it. And then the last one, art related, that is something that honestly, I think every game developer, even if you're a 100% programmer, you should know is Photoshop. Photoshop is one that we use both for our games, like things like our Steam capsule art is made in Photoshop. Some of our mocks are even made in Photoshop. Our icons and UI are often done in Photoshop and all of these thumbnails you see on our YouTube channel, they're made with Photoshop. And Photoshop, it's maybe a bit overkill for some people, but the thing is, it's an industry standard. It's really, really good. Like there are other alternatives, there's Affinity Photo, but I think honestly, I tried working with them. There are like Photoshop, it's crazy expensive. I get it, it's barely worth it, but the skills in Photoshop are probably some of the best like return on investment things that you can learn. It's like really easy, even if you're just having like non-game dev related stuff, like, oh, there's a family photo that I wanna get my ex edited out of. It's very powerful. You can do those things very easily as well. It's like a little bit of work, but there are tutorials for everything and having some real like art and illustration, especially if you're going to be doing 2D art on your own, that is not pixel art. Something like Photoshop is probably going to be one of the biggest tools that you will be using. And sure, we maybe use it a bit more for YouTube now than for game development, but I think that's a good switch to talk a bit more about our YouTube workflow as well. We use Premiere Pro. Should you use Premiere Pro? I don't think so at all, really. No point in learning it. Go for something like DaVinci Resolve instead. I talked about it in a previous video as well. Premiere Pro, it works, but it's overkill for the kind of videos we make. It's once again, one of those things that if you're a pro video editor, you'll probably be using Premiere Pro. But for us, it's like the kind of stuff we do, I don't really need it, but it's, you know, it's part of that creative cloud solution. I have it anyway. So I may as well use it. I've used DaVinci Resolve as well. It's really good and you're going to need it not just for making YouTube videos and snazzy devlogs and whatever, but things like trailers. I made a video about making a trailer in less than an hour. That is done with Premiere Pro, but the exact same workflow applies to DaVinci Resolve. So getting those trailers edited yourself, I know there's a lot of people who are scared of like those tools. And sure, you can do like Movavi Video Editor or like whatever Windows Live Movie Maker is, but it's actually going to be more pain. And there are always like weird things or you're gonna have to pay for it anyway. Whereas DaVinci Resolve, it's free. So getting trailers made is pretty easy that way. You have a lot of technical control already over things like your framing of your different shots. If you wanna like punch in, if you wanna have some more fancy effect like fade-ins and like nested video clips, those tools are really solid. And then on that topic of audio, kind of YouTube related, kind of game dev related is Audacity. Who doesn't know Audacity at this point? Honestly, it's a very great audio editor. We normalize our music with it. I make sound effects with it, usually by like layering a whole bunch of different sound effects. Very easy to use. The UI looks a little bit like it's from 2004 because it probably is but the tool works really good and honestly, I like it. I also tried using Adobe Audition because it's basically Audacity on steroids and part of the Creative Cloud. I did not like it at all. So just go with Audacity instead. And those are the main tools that we use for more of our game dev related stuff. Now we run a studio as well. And this is, I think, where most of you guys aren't really as up to date about, okay, how much of a game dev studio do I really need? And I only have three tools here, but these tools are actually extremely, extremely advanced and like very in-depth. The first one is Excel. I know, it sounds really boring, but my question is, does your studio have any spreadsheets right now? And it doesn't have to be Excel. It could be Google Sheets as well, but just some kind of spreadsheet software. There is a reason that the entire world is basically built upon Excel and other kinds of spreadsheet software. It's really powerful for doing calculations such as how much am I earning, but also for things like tracking influencers you're going to reach out to. We do all of that in Excel. We do a whole list of research in terms of different influences we reach out of. We have data for them in terms of their emails. It's basically our mini CRM tool. It's really powerful. It's really easy to use and it allows you to have a lot of insights that if you don't know what you're trying to track, you can't improve what you're tracking basically. If you don't know what you're earning or what your wish lists are or what influences you're reaching out to, 
you can't improve upon it. And having those tools that really make it easy to visualize what you're working on is really important. And then the next really mundane tool that you're using, I 100% know this, is Discord. So we use Discord a lot. We use it as our main form of communication within the studio. It's like, is it a professional application compared to like Microsoft Teams or WebEx or Zoom or whatever? No, but it works for the really small teams like us and it's free to use. So honestly, Discord is kind of bleeding money, I feel. Why not just like use it as long as we can? Having that communication is really good. Having different kinds of text channels related to different parts of your studio, maybe one for your game, maybe one for your studio in general. We have one where we discuss only like the events itself. Really important, really powerful. Having voice calls, once again, having video calls, pouring stuff, very important. So if you're more than one person, have a little private Discord server. You can use it to write down ideas as well, to pin certain messages, to talk about stuff. It's really solid there. Also, this is just for us, but we have a Discord server ourselves that is like a public one where you guys are in. It's part of our job as well because we interact with you. So there's a link to that down below. If you want to interact more with us, give us your opinion, showcase your own games, go and join our Discord server. It's a really nice community. We're over 1600 people at this point. And we even do some bonus things in there. Like for example, when we did the recent video where we roasted our viewers games, we asked people in that Discord community to go and send me your games. So if you wanna get your game roasted in the future as well, join that Discord and you'll get pinged the moment we do another one of those streams. And then the last one that we also use Discord for, this is a bit of a controversial topic, I don't know, but if you've watched our thumbnails, all of them are AI generated. I'm sorry to tell you. And for that, we use Midjourney, Midjourney, only works through Discord. I don't really fully understand why, but once again, it's a platform that we use. I'm going to be making a more in-depth video about it. How do we use AI? How do I see using AI in game development? Because it is very much a controversial topic, but we wanna go a bit further in depth about that. But having that, once again, it can help drastically in improving your workflow. If you quickly need to just get some reference art, if you quickly need to just spew out some ideas to see if it could work, some of those tools that are part of Discord are really solid. And then the final ultimate S tier tool that you have been using for managing your studio, but that you've probably not been doing mindful is a browser. I know this sounds really boring, but this is one thing that I've realized with running a studio. I don't need to run Unity that often, to be honest. I don't need the beefiest PC. If I just wanna run my studio, all I need is a browser because a lot of the tools that you use as a game developer are purely browser-based. Things like your Steamworks dashboard, fully browser-based. There's no application you need to install for it. Things like your project mentioned, like whether it's Trello or like what we use is a GitLab server. Once again, browser-based. There's no hard application you install. It's just a site you go to and the advantages are very clear. You can access your data from wherever you are basically. But you can go even further. Things like Google Calendar, once again, it's part of your browser. Having calendars, extremely important if you wanna manage your business. What are your deadlines? What are moments that you need to interact with other people? Getting those things set up doesn't take a lot of time and they will improve how you run your studio. Calendars are probably one of the quickest wins you can have in terms of becoming more organized, more like efficient and working more structured. Combine that with something like a Trello or a GitLab board and you're going to be unstoppable. I promise you that. And then one last big one that we use through our browser is our wiki. So we have wiki.js, it's like a server thing set up somewhere and it allows us to really document everything about our game. We don't use Notion. Notion is also pretty good if you ask me, but we're running a team of like five people and at that point it can get pretty costly if you're not a solo guy. So we use wiki.js instead. We document all of our information on that platform and it just allows allows us to have a central source of truth. That is something very important as well. If you don't write down your game ideas, if you don't have a central collection of where everything is going to be that you can just go to whenever you're not certain about what your game was again, it's going to help you a lot in having a more cohesive game and not just making whatever comes up in your brain. And those are pretty much all of the tools we use. There's no need to have like 5 trillion different tools and like SaaS startups and whatever to run your own studio. This is already 
kind of in-depth if you ask me, you can definitely cut out some of these. But I hope this gives you a bit more of an insight into what do we actually use to make our games, to make our videos, to manage our studio in, in total. Don't underestimate browsers and how much stuff you can just do from that browser. You can even make games from your browser if you really wanted to. They wouldn't be like the best probably, but nothing is stopping you from it. There's more and more of an approach of just going everything browser-based anyway. So don't be scared of that. Anyways, am I missing some really cool tools that you use? Maybe your Notion gang, maybe there's some other completely different thing that I've completely forgotten about. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really interested. I like to learn from you guys and maybe you've learned something else from me as well. Other than that, if you're interested in running a game studio and you just want to learn a bit more about, okay, how does making your own games work? What are some of the things that we've learned along the way? Be sure to head down below and subscribe as we make these videos twice a week where we just talk a bit more about game development, the things we've learned, and also just share our failures so you can learn from our mistakes, basically. So that's all I had to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.